from this point on, uh, as we are working through all of the CIP, not just the schools, but uh, all the other uh, functions of government that have CIP, uh, our reconciliation in May will also have to reconcile to something close to what the executive had to reconcile to. Uh, it's not to say there aren't adjustments along the way in a number of areas, but in general, the pie is what it is. So to the degree the executive's recommendation is substantially less for, for schools right now, that, that represents a significant challenge going forward because um, although it's not dollar for dollar, um, if we try to find dollars for schools, it's going to likely, a portion of that's going to have to come from somewhere else. We have a significant potential deficit here uh, that can't be closed with um, recommendations at the margins. Uh, like in past years, we'll be looking at capacity project deferrals. Um, we'll be looking at um, the RevX program, uh, looking at some of the uh, increases the board has requested to its systemic projects. Those all have to be looked at in the context of what we can actually fit in the end. There's only so much bonding capacity similar to your credit card limit. And you can continue to borrow up and down in your credit card limit and pay more off. And, you know, then you have a little bit more money to spend after you've paid it off. But in reality, you've got a credit card limit. And every now and then you can call that company and they're going to maybe extend your credit a little bit more. Um, but at some point, they're going to equal your revenue to that credit limit and they're not going to allow you to go above that. That's the same thing that's happening here with Montgomery County and our bonding capacity. And so that's how I want to break it down for folks at home that just say, well, just raise your spending affordability guidelines and just, you know, then you can spend more money. The reality is, is that we won't get approved to do that. And so this is a very frustrating situation for us because in reality, it means that we're at that limit now. Uh, and it really makes it difficult for us to then be able uh, to do more because we can't. Uh, and so from that perspective, you know, it really is and means that we're going to have to make some tougher decisions. And I think one of the ones that Councilmember Elrich brought up, and I know it's not before us today, but something that uh, is considered is, is that some of the things that we care about, or at least um, are higher on priority lists for some of us than others, which is fair and equitable playing fields for all of our kids, doesn't rise to the same level of priority as it does for school capacity needs. Those are things that for me, and even though we've made you know, great strides in terms of what we're asking for when it comes to how those fields are uh, in terms of Corconut and those kinds of things, and thank you for MCPS, MCPS for being partners in that, and we see EPA studies that are being asked for and consumer protection, they're all, everybody's moving in that direction, which is great. Uh, but the reality is, is those things are still not at the same level, especially when we, have, when we don't have that capacity. Uh, and, and, and need to do some other things. It's something where I think that, you know, systemic projects, HVAC, PLAR, all the things that we know have continuous backlogs that are keeping our schools online are things that rise to more of that priority. But I do agree with you, Keith, that we do need to definitely ask the system for, at this point, unfortunately, without having any sort of uh, uh, other options that are out there for a list of what projects they would recommend uh, deferring uh, to get us to that number.